Hello, Ennis from Never Stop Trucking here. Some of you have been asking me how to fill out a carrier packet, and that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to find uh, um, one, two, maybe three packets here, and then I'll show you how to fill them out. Uh, let's do it right now. Let's go to the computer and start. Here is um, a simple packet, and then we're going to go to more, uh, I should say, advanced packets. Uh, after this. So uh, this is a pack packet that I got from the broker. It shows their information here, their numbers, and then uh, what they require from you. And then sometimes they require you to do this uh, certificate of liability uh, and cargo insurance. And then you have to list it with your insurance. Usually you would contact your insurance. You can email them or call them. Uh, sometimes broker will contact your insurance and then ask them to do this. And sometimes um, insurances have their own portals and then they can set you up with that and you can do it yourself. And that's what I do. Uh, I do it there right away. And then it comes uh, from the insurance. When I send it, uh, it shows a as uh, it's coming from the insurance itself, not me. So here uh, you would uh, put in your uh, carrier MC number. So we're just going to uh, fill out some information here. By the way, I'm using PDF Expert. This is for uh, Macintosh. And then uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader is the most popular. They have free version. And uh, for me, it has been getting slow. So I just got this uh, for my computer. But uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader uh, is the best one to do. Or you can print it out and then fill it out by hand. But then you have to scan it and then upload it to your computer, uh, email it, or, or fax it back. So we're just going to do... Uh, I'm going to change the color here. And then usually I turn uh, the capital letters on always. So I don't have to mess with that. And it looks bigger. It's easier for them to read. So I'm just going to do uh, MC number. And then here uh, DOT safety rating. Uh, whichever is your company. Uh, if it's a satisfactory. Uh, meaning you, know, you have a very good uh, rating. Uh, someone came out to your company and then... Uh, usually they would have to audit you and then everything should be fine and you know this is a dream come true for uh, all companies to have a satisfactory rating uh, none is okay that's usually for new companies and uh, uh, conditional is for someone that has a bad history uh, with their safe safety and their conditional you know DOT gave them some conditions they have to work uh, to improve uh, their safety rating, uh, but uh, a lot of brokers will not work with you if you have a conditional rating. Uh, and then uh, I would just, uh, let's just do this, uh, none, and uh, or you can do this and just uh, circle it like that. So carrier name, so I'm just making this things, these things up, uh, XYZ uh, Logistics. And then the address here, 123 Main Street, uh, State, Chicago, Illinois, 5556. And then your uh, phone number would go here. And then dispatch if different after hours, if you have a different number for after hours or if it's same. I usually do same. And then your fax number here, if you have one. And then uh, your address here, sample at xyz dot okay. And now uh, here the agreement. So uh, the agreement made as of the then you put in today's uh, day. Today is the seventeenth. And then I'm just going to go put in 17th and then December 2021. And then uh, this is their information for the broker. And uh, this is now it says here and uh, here and after referred uh, as to as carrier. So this is you. So that's your carrier's name XYZ Logistics. And uh, their MC number. So we are making this up. And then you would read the contract. 
most of these contracts are um, usually same, but I advise you to go through it and then read everything. And then if you have any questions, you can ask them uh, about that. But you're looking for uh, payment, uh, like when they're going to pay and then what you have to provide. And then like if there are any fees that they might put on you or, or something out of ordinary. And then uh, if you're OK with it, you would just put in your initials here uh, after you read all this. And then uh, if you agree, just put initials array. And then here at the end, usually they have uh, all the information again. And then if you're an LLC, make sure you always add LLC because that's part of your company, uh, part of your company name. And uh, if you're an LLC and you want to uh, be recognized uh, as having that status, then you always have to use it for the legal purposes. And uh, Main Street again, and then uh, you put all the info here and then signature you sign. And now here, uh, like let's do... Uh, your title, if you're president, if you are a manager um, or CEO, um, owner, whatever here, usually uh, brokers will ask that someone in charge uh, signs this and your title cannot be dispatcher. Usually uh, you have to be senior, like uh, operations manager or something, you know, uh, that's high above and then those like see this is owner uh, you can't just be a regular dispatcher to sign this um, but you know sometimes um, companies will play with it and they would just even though it's just a dispatcher because you can't always look for a manager around and they would just in um, put in some kind of title that makes them uh, more senior here that the broker will accept and then here uh, in this program they have a signature you can type in your name uh, you can um, like uh, draw it here oh, it doesn't let me do that uh, or you can upload an image but i would just uh, you know do my uh, name here and uh, that's it done and then i would just drag it here and uh, this is signed and usually 99 percent of the time they accept uh, this kind of signature and that's it i guess on on this uh, uh, packet and then now here you're looking uh, they usually uh, would attach their authority from the dot from fm csa and uh, it shows uh, like what kind of authority they have their information and uh, their uh, policy policy surety number this is their bond uh, and then it's 75,000. That's the minimum nowadays with FMCSA. It used to be 10,000 for brokers. Now it's more. And then you would contact this um, uh, bond carrier. This, if, if these guys don't pay, uh, then you would contact them uh, to, to pay you for the load. But uh, don't expect to get the full amount. They usually don't pay out the full amount. Um, and now they have some basic information about this company here, uh, like where they are, uh, their bank, uh, their references, and all that. So this is really easy pa an easy packet, and I love these kind of packets. Uh, they're easy to fill. Um, you can see all their contacts here. The only thing that I don't see here is uh, how to s where to send the invoice to. Now let me see. Uh, some um, like if you use a factoring company then they uh, will find that out they will find a way to send the invoice to them or maybe they already have them in their database uh, most likely that's the case but if you're uh, sending invoices directly to brokers then you need to uh, know where their um, payment information is like where to send the invoice now here on this packet it doesn't show that but let me and now this is done you know you save it and then uh, you send it along with your packet back to the broker in email. Uh, you would just, you know, uh, go reply here and attach it. And then you just I just do signed, uh, thank you, the packet is filled, uh, whatever. 
but let me just show you the like see this is the this is the rate confirmation that I got from this uh, broker and here uh, I guess it should say somewhere here where to send uh, yeah right here so this is uh, the email where you can send the invoice to uh, this broker when you're done with the load let me look for another packet here that we can uh, work on so this uh, see they sent me like usually they send everything together uh, like W9 and 30 and insurance but uh, this uh, broker sent it all separately and this is uh, okay too because now you don't have to send this back some you know like if you're printing out documents you don't have to um, scan this and send it back to them you can just keep it for your own records like this W9 here um, you just uh, that's their W9 and you can just keep it in your record this is their authority and uh, this is their insurance so you can just keep this for your record what you have to worry about and fill out is the packet now let me see this is a bigger packet so we're just gonna uh, download this okay now uh, please read first so they have all these requirements from you uh, so usually you would have them in your packet uh, you have your insurance certificate in your packet and then they also want to be listed as certificate holders. Uh, you have to have your authority, authority letter uh, from you or your carrier. Uh, W-9 form, uh, you can fill that out and keep it in your package so you don't have to fill it out every time. Um, and then pr carrier profile, you must, must be filled out completely uh, here. And then the agreement and then hold harmless agreement that must be also signed. And then uh, this is where you send the documents after you're done so this is their company profile uh, their office address and their uh, contacts you know all the important people uh, this is what they do uh, and then some brokers don't do this you know it's totally up to them you know and you know for the format or if they're even going to include uh, this so uh, it says you're like low documents that you send them uh, must be in pdf format no pictures or images uh, sometimes um, drivers will be uh, taking a picture to you and you just uh, use it as that as a proof of delivery or bill of lading and they don't accept that it has to be a scanned document and they have apps for that too uh, free apps uh, such as cam scanner or genius app uh, paper required to process for me sign rate confirmation so you have to sign the rate confirmation after you get the load uh, and send it back to them uh, the invoice number with the order number meaning the uh, rate confirmation that they send you always usually have order numbers uh, or load number something in uh, uh, something like that and uh, you have to include their order number because that's how they look up their load and that's how they know uh, how to pay you and then sign bill of lading pod uh, lump receipts and miscellaneous receipts um, so the bill of lading has to be signed by the receiver uh, that proves that they received it and you can use it and that's now uh, your payment that's your money that's how you send it uh, that's what you send to the broker to get paid it has to be absolutely has to be signed S sometimes auto uh, industry they use uh, stamps uh, but usually it's signed um, you know using uh, their hand and pen all paper must be signed legible in pdf format and it has to be received uh, within 30 days of uh, completing the load or payment will be delayed okay now this is the fun part with uh, uh, most um, most uh, packets here like all these things that you have to fill out and uh, they want to have it for their own uh, records uh, so uh, I'm not going to fill it out. I'm just going to show you what goes where. And I have to turn this signature off thing. So carrier name, that's your name, full legal name, as we said, year established when uh, the, the, your uh, carrier authority has been established. Uh, dispatch, contact names, you put uh, uh, how many, whatever the number of dispatchers, you put their names here. Your mailing address for the company, 
your federal tax ID, which is the EIN number that you get from uh, IRS, your MC number, uh, your SCAC code. Uh, some companies don't have this, but usually you would have them. That's, uh, uh, f in my uh, opinion, just a way for them to, you know, take some money. But usually auto industries do. It's a four a letter code and then they would issue it to you and then if you don't know what it is you can just uh, google SCAC code and uh, where is it here there is this website that you because sometimes um, hey, right here uh, nmfta.org um, so this is the direct website and then you can just go to their website and apply for SCAC code and then they give you uh, it's it's like 65 70 dollars per year and then uh, sometimes broker use this or like even with other industry they will use that but let me go back to that packet you put in that SCAC code here if you have it our contract checks allowed allowed so this is um, if uh, sometimes carriers need an advance and then uh, they will ask um, the broker for a com check and then um, who is allowed to get it, the drivers or dispatch. I uh, used to allow it, but uh, I had a, a driver, an owner operator who, who um, kind of, uh, <laughs> what's the right word? Uh, he was asking these uh, brokers for the com checks and he never told me and they paid it to him and now uh, and he never told me about that and i found out only when he left so i don't allow it to drivers or dispatchers you know if you have to have a lumper i'll pay it for you and then brokers will reimburse me uh, phone numbers for the company fax number cell phone number email address emergency uh, number where they can contact you after hours and then eld compliant uh, that means like if you have um ELDs in your trucks, you know, and then most companies nowadays have them. So yes, now Smartwick here, this is if you have the these certifications. Uh, big companies usually have uh, some of these uh, certificates. Um, small companies usually don't. So if you don't know what this is, most probably you don't have it, and that's that's okay. Uh, they're just asking if you have a Twig holder. This is if you go to your drivers go to ports. And then uh, if uh, there's an escort needed, you would have to pay for it. Broker will um, uh, reimburse you for the escort. And that's just for safety purposes. Uh, but some drivers have Twig cards and they have to renew it. And then, you know, go uh, through some uh, checks, background checks, I think, too. And then they will get the Twig card um, and then use that to enter the port. That means that they have been checked and they're okay. They don't need an ex escort. So if you don't have it, it's totally fine. If your drivers have them, then uh, even better. Or if your company has an account. Uh, hazardous materials, if you are not hauling hazmat loads, then no. If you yes, then you put in uh, the certificate. Uh, now, the equipment. Um, usually, we I work with... Uh, uh, 53 foot drive ends and then you know uh, whatever how many trailers you have if you have 48 uh, uh, feet drive ends or flatbeds reefer step deck whatever you have just put in here and then here if you're working with a factoring company you put in uh, their information and then you have to uh, when you send them all these documents to the broker then you have to uh, as attach the notice of assignment from the broker uh, I'm sorry from the factoring company and then what that is is uh, factoring companies uh, will give you that uh, in your own name uh, it's uh, uh, like a kind of like a certificate thing and that shows uh, that you're working with that company and that all payments uh, are to be forwarded to the factoring uh, company and uh, they have a, you have an account with them and they know what it is what once they receive the check or ACH from the broker then they know it, they will apply it to your account uh, but the broker sometimes need an official document uh, you know proving that you work with this uh, factoring company and I advise you to include it in your packet so whoever you work with when you send them your packet the insurance authority 
and all that they get the notice of assignment right away in the packet and they don't have to ask you for it uh, insurance agent information this is your agency name contact person you, who you work with and your uh, their phone number what i usually do since this is already in my packet my insurance information i just do this c packet and um, usually they don't um say anything they just they can just look up all the information in the packet because i don't know their phone number i don't have it in my head and then just saves me some time on typing and then same thing here uh, this agreement is made on uh, s s December. So since this um, uh, in United States, this uh, month is always first. So if they have a, a field for both dates, like one field, I just do uh, December uh, 17th. And then uh, here I can play with this. And then you can even make it uh, smaller. Uh, but this is just enough here and uh, 2021 uh, be by and between KTI Logistics and and then this is your company name XYZ Lo uh, what did you say transport logistics I don't even know let's just say logistics LLC and then I will maybe fix it a little bit and then your MC number here and then again you read everything here uh initial it put your initials uh here on each page and then once you get to the last page then uh, usually it's all same now here uh this is in case uh there is a, a notice uh like um you know something about um suing someone court uh, disputes uh, whatever and then if there's a notice to be sent to you and this is where you know you put your um, uh, company information and your address here and uh, you know fax telephone email you put it over here sometimes you don't have to fill this out but some brokers require it and then here at the end again we have your company name uh, by that's the signature okay printed that's your name John Doe and then again your your title and date the address of your company uh, your phone number email fax and a federal id uh, which is um, the employee identification number uh, and then here your company name but then by that's the signature and then you just uh, put your signature here and then hold harmless uh, uh, this form will serve as evidence that the carrier listed below acknowledges their understanding of the workers' compensation law in their state and agrees to hold harmless KTI uh, logistics from any claim or liability. Um, da, 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 da. So, in your state, every state is different. Uh, some uh, states don't um, require you to have workers' comp uh, for um, your um, employees or drivers. Some will allow with exceptions you know depends you know how you pay them all that depends uh now if um, you don't have uh sometimes um they will ask you here if you have th the actual workness comp or no and then if you have it you put it in there and put your uh, insurance policy number if you don't have uh, that uh, policy in place at all then they will ask you okay does your state allow you uh, not to have it and then you say yes the state where I am uh, it allows me to not have that and work and then you put it there and then they will ask you to hold them harmless uh, because if some, something happens on the road and then the, uh, someone wants to sue someone they just want to be um, not included in that uh, suit they don't want to be sued uh, for any injuries uh, because you know they are not um, the company like your driver is not the company they work for they're just uh, hauling the load in your company name uh, with this broker so you know put in the uh, carrier name here and uh, the signature title and date and uh, that's it now this is if you uh, don't work with a factoring company and you wish to have direct deposit ACH in your bank account 
Uh, please complete this form only if you want your pay directly deposited to your account and you do not have a factoring company. So uh, fr from this, uh, I assume that they, if, you do, if you have a factoring company, now you don't worry about this. If you don't have a factoring company and you want them to send you a check, then uh, I'm assuming by the wording here that uh, you don't need to fill this out. They're just going to send you a check. But if you do want to have direct deposit, you have to fill this out. Uh, your company name, MC number, a e email, uh, federal um, uh, identification number, address, your financial institution, the name of your bank, uh, where the bank is located. Sometimes they ask for their address and their phone number and the contact person here as well. Your checking account number and your bank routing number, sign and date, and then you must attach a voided check. Uh, so um, just uh, get a check, uh, scan it, and then actually get a check, write void on it with big letters, big fat letters, scan it, uh, put it on your computer and have it ready here, and then you attach it here, and uh, they um, s uh, will use uh, the numbers, the account number and routing number on that check to confirm that it's indeed the correct number and then sometimes they have these packets that you can uh, fill out online so uh, I'm gonna look for one of those uh, like my, my, yeah they're going these, these are the best packets my they, they they're different they have a few uh, uh, systems here that you can use uh, but then like here they send you like when you get set up the broker will send you and they don't need your packet. Uh, from you because uh, everything is here already in the system so let me uh, your uh, address up here and then your contact information and then usually it has it signed once you fill it out the first time this has all your information uh, saved and then if a new broker sends you their packet and they're using this service my carrier packets then this is all saved already uh, and then you can just proceed further, uh, confirm that everything is uh, okay. And then you just go next. And then this is the W9 form here. You know, you confirm this. And then um, you have to agree first and then read it. Uh, read the, the agreement. And then you go to save. And th th this is it, you know, this is really cool. Uh, uh, so I love these. And uh, yeah, hopefully this has been helpful to you. And, and um, come back for more and uh, I'll see you around. Thanks for watching.